So I'll, I just don't, I don't know why I feel like doing this. It's just like, I'm a little teapot, so it's that. Here is my handle and here is my, I'm oh no, a sugar bowl. Welcome to another episode of Gina's Low Carb Kitchen. Today, we are gonna be making a bourbon peach Iowa pork chop, and we're also gonna be making a wedge salad. A total of 3.1 carbs that you could eat all you want, and you're gonna be like, Gina, thank you. You are like a walking goddess, and I'm gonna be like, I know, right? So let's get started. All right, here I have my, um, I call them Iowa chops because I'm from Iowa and that's what they call these thick chops. But now that I'm in Texas, I could also call them a, a Texan a pork chop. So these are very easy, very basic. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take, you can season them any way you want. Actually salt and pepper works out really good, but because of my peach bourbon sauce, I'm going with the house all purpose seasoning. What we do, we just, Spread a little on the top. Now that I've gone ahead and seasoned the opposite side of the pork chop as well, it's time to start cooking them. And what you wanna do is you wanna have a frying pan. You're gonna put two tablespoons of olive oil. Put it on this a little heating, This put it on this little hot plate that you can't see and wait for it to get nice and hot. Remember I do my my little like check and see, but I need a knife. Ooh, look, I have one. And of course your stovetop works, but for the sake of being in one location and talking directly with y'all, we opted to get a hot plate. So that's what we're doing. Here's my one little piece. Remember from the last time, you're gonna to toss that in the pan. Ooh, it's a sizzling. And as soon as it gets hot enough, I'm gonna put the pork chops in there and we're gonna let them sear on one side. And because of the thickness, it's very important to slow cook. So we want the presentation side to have um, a little char on it or a little nice color. And then we're gonna flip them over and we're going to let them slow cook so they get nice and tender. People have a tendency to want to cook pork chops and, and chicken as hard and as fast as they can. And it ends up just sucking all the life and, and all the juiciness out of it. But when you slow cook, it's super tender. It's very moist and juicy inside. So now that you can see is we have it hot enough to actually put the pork chops in there. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you're dealing with a thick bone in protein, you wanna make sure you have the bones towards the middle of the pan. So where the most heat is, and it's gonna have a better chance to cook thoroughly and you're not dealing with any redness or anything afterwards. There you go, they all fit. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna put this pan on a medium high heat. I'm going to let them sear. And then as soon as I get some good color on one side, I'm going to flip them over, put a lid on it, and then take it down to a very low heat and let them slow cook. I'm a big fan of, of, of having my pork and chicken be very moist. Now that it's been about three to four minutes, let's check this side. Yeah, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Look. That is what I'm talking about. Now the very nature of how thick these chops are it's going to take a while, especially with bone in, for that to cook. So now that I, I have them uh, seared with a nice presentation when I serve it, I'm going to put a lid on it. I'm going to reduce the, the heat to low and let them cook. You hear the sizzling in the background. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like my tummy going to be full in a little bit. Because I've been starving myself all day and quite frankly, I'm ready to throw it down. Now we're moving on to the wedge salad. It's coming right up. Watch this. So now we have our ingredients for wedge salad. A full head of lettuce. And by the way, you guys, how um, I pick a head of lettuce 
is I squeeze it. And if it's very firm and there isn't any give, you get the most bang for your buck because it isn't just a bunch of loose leaves. So you just kind of give it a squeeze there. And if, you're, if it feels like a solid head, that's what I choose. Anyway, all right. So what I do is I just cut straight down. Ooh, that's loud. Sorry about that. And then you could do like threes if you like. So anyway, we have a nice wedge here. Then what I'm going to do is I like this. I like this, uh, this Olive Garden Parmesan Ranch. Hey y'all, one carb, get under one sugar. So if you're a ranch person, this is delicious. What you do? is you take it and try to ooh, squeeze it, give it a little, yeah. Okay, I broke my hand. I broke my hand this uh, past summer and it's still weak. So I need to squeeze it. And I like a lot of ranch and since you can afford to eat it, go for it. Then, you sprinkle this cheese over it. I love cheese. And since it's definitely on a diabetic, low carb menu, I put a lot of cheese all over it. Sprinkle some red onions. I love some onions. Put some tomatoes on it. And then, since I'm a presentation person, let me make that prettier for you. You gotta put the, the glue on it. There you go. Boink. Don't slide. Okay. I mean, it's just whatever it's going to be. People always ask what the best way to boil an egg is so that you can get it out of the shell quickly. You have the pot of water that's already boiling, and then I take a slotted spoon and I gently lower the egg in, in there so it doesn't hit the bottom and split open. I boil it for 15 minutes and then I remove them, I put it in a bowl, I put some water in there and I fill it with ice and I let it sit in an ice bath. A bath. I let it sit in an ice bath for about half an hour. And then when you're done with that, you pull them right out. Take that off there. You find the bubble and it comes right off. There you go. Ooh, I need to make sure I don't get any shell in there because that's an awkward crunch. In fact, let me run this under the water real quick. So then what I do is I cut the egg. Oh. And then I'm worried with it. I love egg, so I just put it all over the top. There you go. Now we're gonna add the bacon. I do approximately one slice per wedge. And you guys, the ingredients that I give you and the amount, it's all subjective. What I do is I just give you a starting point. You can add as much or as little as you want. This is all great. By the way, you should know that if you are you know, diabetic, you're just trying to figure out what you're gonna do, uh, for your new diet, a good place to start is to understand that all breakfast food is free range. You can have as much of it as you want all day long. I mean, uh, from a carb and sugar standpoint, uh, toast and hash browns obviously are not on there, but bacon and eggs, sausage, uh, Polish sausage, ham, all of that, that's a perfect place to start. And who doesn't love breakfast? And then you have a wedge. Well, I mean, you don't have like a wedge. I mean, well, you might have a wedge. I personally don't have a wedge right now, unless it's on this plate. Now that's kind of nice. Dude, should we eat this? Because I'm like really hungry. All right, okay, focus. 
do 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 I'm ready. All right. I'm going to check the pork chops. So my husband just walked in and he works hard. So I'm going to give that wedge salad to eat because he's hungry. Let's see what we're looking like there. Remember, we're going to cook and then we're going to look inside. Let me show you here. Oh, there you go. It's close. It's close. I don't know how good you can see that, but it is close. The juice is a little pink yet. We want it to run clear. Oh, look, it's like, ugh. Okay, focus, Gina. So we're gonna check a few more. But we're actually getting pretty close, but see how nice and juicy that is when you slow cook? We're getting close, y'all. Oh, so close. Yeah, fabulous. All right, put those on there for a little bit more. Excuse me while I... So the very next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a peach bourbon sauce. And it's fabulous. All right, so I'm gonna pull in the ingredients that I need. It's not fancy, it doesn't take much, but it has one of my favorite ingredients. And by the way, hey, yes, it's big. Don't judge me. Don't you know that you save money when you buy in bulk? All right. So this is very important. It's, it's well, depending if you're, if you're from the South, it's pole laner. If you're from anywhere else, it's probably pole laner. But this, this uh, company is fabulous because they make all of these sugar-free plus fiber uh, uh, products that they can be used as jams. I'm getting ready to try making my own uh, peach pie with it. But they have peach, they have mango, they have strawberry, grape, blackberry, any flavor that you could probably want. And you can buy them anywhere. I, I picked this up at Walmart. All right, so you're gonna need my mystical magical spoon. Oh, let's get a bigger one. I don't know why I like cooking with spoons, but I go through a lot of them when I'm cooking. All right, so dig in here. Oops. Point. I'm gonna put, get a whole cup because I like a lot of sauce when I cook, but when I eat different things, there you go. Okay, so we have one cup of your pole winger. My husband's walking behind here, so oh, I have a funny story to tell you about that, by the way. Hi, honey. Okay, so we were over at our neighbor's house. It was our friend's house, and we just stopped over to, you know, just say hi. It had been a while since we'd seen them because of the COVID, and I had just made a JD, a sugar-free pie, uh, and we were over there at our neighbor's house, and he goes, we can't stay long. Oh, wait, and he goes, we can't stay long. I have pa at home. And it's like, what? And the neighbor was like, excuse me? He said, pa, I have pa. And I said, listen, it's pie, it's apple, and he wants to go home and have some. And they're like, oh. Okay, so one cup. Yes, my favorite part. One cup of your, your preserves, and then a quarter cup of bourbon. Just slightly under a quarter cup. Perfect. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pour a little extra and you're gonna drink it. Woo! It's all downhill from here. <laughs> Mama loves you. Okay, we'll set you aside for now. I can fill that down in my belly. So, what I actually need is I'm gonna use this fork. I'm gonna smash it up in there. So it has a lot of gelatin in there. And we're gonna let that sit and let that absorb. Oh, so, so something, something kind of funny happened today. I mean, it's funny to me because it happens a lot. And you know, when, when you move out of your hometown, for me, it was Burlington, Iowa. What's up, big town? You get asked a lot. Uh, about your nationality when people don't know you. So they're like, 
so, you know, Gina, you know, what nationality are you? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm half Korean and I'm half white farmer from Iowa. And they're like, well, okay, but it's true. And so as soon as they hear that you have any part of Asian in you, they want to know, oh, so, so you're half Korean, do you know martial arts? I'm like, really? And it, 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 dude, it happens a lot, or dudes, plural in this case. So, so they're like, so, you know, do, do, do you know martial arts? And I'm like, well, you know, to be honest, I, I do practice, med um, excuse me, I had to swallow. To be honest, I do practice Mexican judo. And they're like, what's Mexican judo, right? Right, you know, I mean, it's kind of a weird thing. I say like, hey man, if someone's gonna come up to me, I'm like, hey man, bring it. Cause you don't know if I have a gun, you don't know if I have a knife. And listen, I usually always have a knife. But I, I get a kick out of that. And then they say, so um, wh which half are you? Which, which, which half is the Asian side? I'm like, really? I'm like, so I just get to the point where, right? I just get to the point where I'm like, bottom half? I don't know. And they're like, what? And I'm like, oh, you meant, okay, my mother's side. My mother is Korean. God. It's funny though, they ask you what? What what the, what half is Asian? I'm like, really? It's the bottom half. Gee. So we're gonna let this sauce marinate in that delicious bourbon. We're gonna set that off to the side. Okay. <clears throat> can you see it up there? Okay. So as you can see, we have a lot of jeez, that's running. That's fab. I love this. And it's running clear. So I have a feeling we're gonna be ready to eat these, but let's check them first. And I'm back, 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 okay. So let's cut into these. Look at that, it's still nice and juicy. Look at it run. Perfect. Yes. That guy's so tender. Make your mama cry. It's like I cannot express how important it is to slow cook everything. Because people have a tendency to want to make the pan dry. It's like driving through fog. When you're driving through fog, you know, it's, it's they have a study. People tend to want to drive faster to try to drive through the fog. With the pork, people want to cook it on high heat to make sure it's done all the way, just stop. Slow cooking is the bomb. So we're gonna uh, set off to the side and then we're gonna get some plates and we're gonna have our fabulous meal. I'll be right back. All right. So now we're ready to plate uh, the par tops. There you go. So now you can see just how the juices run clear and we're still moist. I know you don't like the word moist, but I really, I'm not mad at it. And if you can give me another term to describe a pork chop that is not dry, I will stop using the word moist. One of these, but until then, moist pork chops. Juicy. <laughs> well, I can use juicy. All right, Garrett, you win. We have some very juicy pork chops for you today. All right, let's pull one out. I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna put these back over there. God, that juice, it looks fabulous. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bourbon peach. We're gonna put it right over there and it should melt as it gets warmer. And then we're also gonna bring up, did you see this? Oh my God. I just want a motorboat in this wedge salad. I always want to like, ah. Which, let's face it, I mean, I've done worse. It's so good. It's so good. Don't judge me. <laughs> He's judging me. <laughs> okay. So, let's get this fork. I, I'm not going to leave the camera again to go get, uh, like, another fork, but let's try this. Look, y'all, look, y'all, it's juicy. Mm. 
pretty proud of myself. Okay. We got it. Look at this. It's perfect. Okay. I share with him because he has to be as hungry as I am. Oh, he did. He took the whole thing. Don't. He he took the whole thing. Anyway, give us your opinion. Great. That was not supposed to take the whole bite. No, you were. I just. <laughs> No one can appreciate you blushing like I can. So I, 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 <laughs> I really do it to, you know, entertain myself. So there you go. And what we, like I said, you have a whopping 3.1 carbs for this meal. 3.1 carbs. Can eat it all day long. And obviously you have plenty of leftovers. So you can eat it all day long tomorrow too. And what you can do with the leftovers, let me show you real quick. You can take it, okay? And you can slice it just like this. And you can do anything with this. You can totally make it a completely separate meal just by, okay, you can have pork fajitas. Okay, you can have, put this in, in, a, in an omelet for breakfast. You can make it a sandwich. You can put barbecue sauce over it. And the barbecue sauce will pretty much overflavor the bourbon, but you still get the bourbon. So it's like a win for everybody. Yay, go bourbon. But there's literally so much you can do. You can just, you, you can put it on the side with, you know, eggs and grilled peppers. You can reheat it slowly in the microwave. Uh, and you just have like grilled peppers, grilled red, green peppers with onions on it. Dude, so good. Enjoy. Now it's time for the breakdown. Never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it, never gonna get it. Yeah. Oh my god, I want to eat it so bad. <gasps> oh. Wait, one more for the pudding? Yes. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> so anyway, y'all, if you like, you know, my meals and you like the recipes, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button. And also, I mean, okay, people on these kind of sites are like, we may have an affiliation. You know, so if you hit on any of our links or whatever, no, dude, I'm telling you, it buys the cheddar. And just tell your friends, because, I mean, why not? Thanks for watching. Peace out. So I almost forgot to tell you, so my, my husband, we, okay, we have neighbors that live up our, our uh, lane, and they have chickens, and they'll bring us fresh eggs once in a while and he just bought these in tonight and i'd like to say that this, this poor chicken it came out without breaking so go chicken <laughs> see it? what why dude that was funny you're not giving me the <laughs> i'm not funny Gosh. wait is it, so is it empty no, dude, there's like a whole could be baby chicken in here and I'm going to I'm going to commit murder and I'm going to crack it and put it into the frying pan tomorrow. <laughs> you know, but or like we have a little hat. Wait, do you have that Sharpie over there? Mm -hmm. Okay, give it. Yeah. Watch it. It's a fancy headed chicken egg. It's a fancy headed chicken egg. It's a fancy headed chicken egg. <laughs> what? What are you doing? Rotating. Rotating? No, it's upside down. It's... Wait, you want to see its little no. chicken hole? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Boink, 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 boink. <laughs> Everybody has one. <laughs>
Why are you gonna make it so awkward? <laughs> we gave him to, oh, I snorted. Bye, y'all.